Okay, so a quick run through of biomorphic component. I've opened the Mobius example that's included in the download, and this is version uh, 0.3. And it's a bit like Galapagos in that you pop in a genome, which is the parameter states. So in this model, we've got a Mobius band with some twists in it, and we've got some density parameters, and we've got a thickness parameter in terms of extrusion. And we've got, in this section, we have to plug in the geometry. So we want to be able to bring in the geometry. It's a bit like speckle in this way. We want to, and this has to be a mesh geometry. And the third input is the performance criteria. So anything we measure uh, on that mesh in this example, this could be anything. It could be sustainability criteria. It could be um, structural performance, something like that. We plug in here, and then we can also have lots of different performance criteria. In this case, we've just got three, which is area, node count, phase count. If I hit the double click on the component, the window comes up for Biomorpha. I'm going to have start with a population size of 100, uh, quite a low mutation probability for the GA uh, at 1%. And, and these tabs, you, the About tab, you just get a little information on the project. If I hit Go, we get our first generation. And you saw in the background how it was kind of whirling through some generations, a bit again, a bit like Galapagos. In this case, we have a population of 100 um, para different parameter states, or 100 different designs. Um, but each one, we can't display 100 designs. So what we do is we do a thing called k-means clustering of that set. And each little white dot here represents a group that are, is similar to that, what's called a centroid, a cluster centroid. Um, so we reduce the 100 designs down to something more legible. Um, for a kind of interactive GA. If I click on designs, we'll see 12 designs. These are the 12 cluster representatives, they're called. And I can spin around, I have a look at these. Um, I can double click on them and uh, their data appears on the right hand side here. And also it's displayed in the main Rhino viewport. And you'll see on these sections here, these colors, we also have a little indicator of quantitative performance. So even though this is an interactive GA, um, we can actually see how well this one is performing. In terms of well is performing, this is um, a maximum, in this case, a no, count, no count, phase count, and area. And if I click on, let's say, hmm, let's click on one I like, uh, so this flat one, I'm just going to pick one for the first generation, and this is artificial selection, essentially. So the next generation, we're more likely uh, to have designs that look like this one in the in the next generation. Uh, so let's. I'm just going to select these really really thin ones to show you how it's evolving to these thin states. Because I'm telling it to. Okay, so I can do that. It'll also because of the mutation and the kind of the vastness of the population, you'll also get these extreme values. And if I click on these again, you'll see the next generation. They'll start to get thicker. If we go to the history tab, this also records a history of your evolution. In this case, this is the first uh, run, um, what's called the branch. And these are the uh, generations of that particular branch. So you'll see there's performance criteria recorded here. We can also double click on these and go back to have a look at these in the Rhino viewport. And this button here means we can reinstate population. So let's just do one more generation. If I evolve this, and let's say I wanted to go back to the, actually let's go back to these, this population which had these kind of light, light ones. I can reinstate that population and I'm back here. And now any anything I evolve, so let's say, um, let's again evolve pretty, this is golden one that's performing quite well in terms of no count, face count, etc. So now I'm just going to do a few generations. Uh, okay, let's, oh no, let's go for this kind of, these kind of dark, uh, dark red ones. So you see they're coming up, and if I look at the history, we'll see that this has now started a new branch, and it kind of indicates where that branch has come from, and it gives a new generation. We can also export this as an image, so if you wanted to print this out and discuss it, uh, let's just call this image, because it's... Uh, it's quite early in the morning and I have no imagination. Uh, let's just reduce this in size. Of course, I can't see this university laptop. 
uh, what was it called? Image. So if I open this up, you'll see I get this 300 dpi image of uh, the history. And these can get quite large, of course, uh, and it'll still cope with that, it's absolutely fine. And a lot of time and effort went into trying to reduce the memory size. If we had a kind of orbit around each one of these in the history, it would just absolutely kill the memory. So. Um, and and your processor, so uh, and probably not your processor, but certainly it kills the kind of memory, and and you get serious lag. Uh, okay, so this is kind of generating artificial selection, and in the new uh, version, there's also this. Um, there's the benefit of using this population. You might think, why have we got population of a hundred? Um, let's just start this again, and run again with a fresh new random population. And I say, oh, why have we got 100? We just use 12. It's kind of the case, you can just have 12 if you're doing artificial selection. Um, that's that's quite nice, but actually we have this new feature in the new version which is we can inter, um, go between optimization, so kind of similar to Galapagos, and artificial selection. So let's say we wanted to maximize the area if we click maximize now here on these radio buttons and you can do this for any, you can minimize or maximize any of these performance criteria if I click evolve of course it's taking a bit longer because it's doing the whole population now so it's it's making use of this 100 size population and a large population is is much better for these kind of automatic GAs or doing a kind of automatic search if I click on history, it's actually recorded the first generation, and it's got the optimum for that particular uh, criteria. In this case, we looked at area, and we, the area here is 43,000. There's no units, of course, but um, there's a number, so 43,000. And it also gives a population average in this kind of tooltip. And you can see that this one is much better than the population average. So at the moment, the population average is 13,000. If I run this again, so let's run this a couple of times. Hopefully it won't take too long. It's a relatively simple model, but there's quite a lot of uh, polygons. So if I go back to history now, it's recorded 12 in this case. Uh, and you see this one here. So this guy is obviously a really high area candidate that's kind of not going to go away from the population anytime soon. But also the average, if I look at the average, we've got 13,800 here. Then we've got 23,600, and now we've got 27,652. So you can see it is working. We can also intersperse, so let's say we wanted to kind of, I don't know, we saw one in this uh, population that we particularly liked. I quite like this three braid one. If I then click to evolve, Ah, okay, so there's there's one thing you have to turn the kind of automatic optimization off, of course, and back to this artificial selection, and you'll see the next generation. Um, we've got these uh, more like braid three ones as we expected, and it records it in the history as well. So it's in the same generation run, but we're going down here, so it's four and five, and again we could go back and reinstate this population if we saw fit, and then we could evolve this again. So that's a little introduction to um, this tool, this artificial evolution, uh, interactive GA sometimes called. It's, it's, there's no crossover, it's just mutation, but um, with interactive uh, GAs it tends to be that um, crossover doesn't really work quite so well. So we might introduce crossover for the automatic optimization to kind of help things a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. And just to say, we also, in the component, we get a recorded history of all the parameter states and all the clusters, but we're working on for the next release a better way to save parameter states so that you can return to this and, uh, and maybe interject your own designs into this evolution. Okay, so thanks a lot. Um, any questions, just email me and click on the About tab and uh, you'll find information here. Actually, post it on the uh, Biomorpha group. That would be great. Okay, thank you very much.